when blockchain and Bitcoin protocol came up, they were a mixed feeling. This is Rashid Gerawi, a professor of the IC school at TPFL. On the one hand, people were very happy to see that these concepts finally made it to the, the large, to the world, and people were talking about these concepts that were sometimes considered useless. But on, on the other hand, people were a little bit in this community of distributed computing, intrigued to see uh, this algorithm being so expensive and so energy. Uh, even if we knew that the problem was difficult, the numbers were really striking. We previously discussed this tension between classical distributed computing and blockchain protocols with Professor Maurice Herley. Intriguingly, as we discussed it in another video, Professor Gerawi's research group successfully applied classical distributed computing methods to prove that the blockchain protocol was an overkill to design decentralized cryptocurrencies. And today, we'll dig a little bit more into the mathematical proof of this result. What we did is to try to look at the original paper of Nakamoto uh, more carefully to see what is exactly the problem solved. Yes, because the cool thing about Nakamoto's original Bitcoin paper is that it solved several problems at once, like civil resistance, double spending, and consensus. We discussed all those notions in previous videos, but the trouble is that Nakamoto sort of used a sledgehammer to crack these different nuts. Instead, Professor Gerawi's research group tackled each problem separately with more adequate tools. Uh, for example, a uh, former student of the lab, Marco Vukovic, now at IBM, has been looking into the problem of decoupling uh, civil resistance from consensus in what is called permission system and working on new protocols there. Civil resistance is often regarded as one of the main desirable features of Bitcoin, but without going into details, in permission systems, it is actually an overkill. In such systems, much more efficient alternatives to blockchain have been designed by Professor Gerawi's research lab. With another former student of the lab, Petr Kuznetsov, who is now professor at Paritech, we have tried to define precisely the problem solved by Nakamoto's paper called the double spending problem. And we realized something interesting. We realized actually that to solve that problem, you don't need the full machinery of consensus. You can do something much easier. And this is one of the most important takeaways of this video, which we shall dwell on in the sequel. But let's insist on this. If all that's needed is to avoid double spending, which is really the crux of decentralized cryptocurrencies, then the whole machinery of blockchain and consensus is not needed. We don't need proof of works and huge energy consumptions. And that's because solving double spending is actually an easy problem. And by easy, I mean something very precise. The world of computing is divided into two camps, easy and hard according to whether it's P or NP. You can do it in a polynomial manner or you cannot. And assuming that these classes are different, the world is nicely divided. In distributed computing, the world is divided into two classes, roughly speaking, whether you can solve the problem asynchronously without any time in assumption, or whether you need some time in assumption. And the first class, what that is called completely asynchronous, is easy here. And consensus belongs to the second part, which is hard problems, because there is a fundamental result in the field, FLP, Fisher, Lynch, and Patterson, that shows that you cannot solve consensus in an asynchronous system as long as you have one node, one machine, one process that can crash. We talked about the hardness of consensus backed by impossibility theorems in a previous video. And what we have shown is that the problem of double payment at the heart of Nakamoto's implementation is an easy problem according to this classification. And this major discovery led to the design of an implementation of cryptocurrency that bypasses the need of consensus. So we came up with an alternative approach to solving the money or asset transfer problem. And uh, we showed that this has consensus number one. This is Matej Pavlovich, a PhD student of Professor Gerawi in the IC school at TPFL. And consensus number one, what does that mean? A consensus number means uh, how many members of uh, of all the processes that need to that are solving this problem need to agree in order to solve this problem so consensus number one means that nobody needs to agree with anybody except for themselves that's easy 
consensus number five means that uh, five processes need to solve the agreement problem, the consensus problem, in order to solve that particular problem with consensus number five. The holy grail of distributed computing is the consensus problem itself, which, it's, which itself has consensus number infinity. That means whatever group uh, of processes you have, if they want to solve this problem, they all need to agree. Now, the blockchain protocol solves the consensus problem, so it addresses problems of consensus number infinity. And thus, it can be used to solve the distributed cryptocurrency design problem. But this is actually an overkill, indeed. The interesting result that we have with uh, Professor Kuznetsov from Paris is that the money transfer problem, which boils down to uh, avoiding double spending, actually has consensus number one. That means that agreement is not necessary at all. This is a very spectacular and exciting result. Cryptocurrencies have been designing these huge structures called blockchains that consume terawatts at every instant because their designers thought that solving consensus was necessary to make them secure. But it turns out that a safe design of cryptocurrencies only required to solve a problem with consensus number one. And uh, this is very intuitive because if I have an account and I want to perform a, transactions from, perform a transaction from the account, I only need to agree with myself. I'm one person, I have one account, and I, I'm the only one who is supposed to decide where the money from my account goes. And for this, I only need to agree with myself. That's why we have consensus number one. And this makes a huge difference on what kind of consensus is needed. In practice, it means that we can, we can uh, solve the problem much easier than, than many people thought until now. In particular, pragmatic, efficient alternatives have been designed by Professor Rashid Gerawi, Matej Pavlovich, and their collaborators. We have two fundamental practical solutions to this. One is uh, more useful in uh, limited groups, uh, groups of limited size, where we are not too many and we can afford talking to most of each other. And then we have another uh, solution that is uh, more practical for huge global deployment systems where millions or billions of uh, people and entities and uh, companies and whatever can participate. And uh, this would still have reasonable performance and uh, we would be able to perform many fast transactions. And we will dig into these two solutions in the upcoming videos, which for those of you who know what this means, are about using quorums and samplings. You can also find out more by reading the paper describing this all or by subscribing so as not to miss the upcoming Zettabytes videos. We can define different classes of equivalences with k going from 1 to n. Here, n is the best, one is the, the, the worst. And at each, every level of the hierarchy, we can have a class of problems we can solve. The solution for the rather limited group is based on so-called quorums. 